So I'm glad to see you and happy to be in Berlin at DroidCon. And I will present the topics, uh, uh, the topic how indie game developer can survive and which is more important, can succeed on Android platform. So uh, why am I talking on this? So I uh, work as developer relations at Enhance. It's a tech startup platform for mobile developers to integrate various SDKs without downloading them. And we formed a big community around this technology. Right now we have 3,000 developers who use it and uh, they share their stories, how they manage to make games, uh, promote them, how, uh, how to solve several various issues. And um, uh, what is uh, the main problem for Android developers now is that every year, every quarter, the number of games is growing, and if a new developer comes to this market with my game, uh, he says, okay, so there are so many games, how to make my own game noticed? And this is the main concern for developers uh, everywhere, but especially uh, on Android. And uh, we can say that uh, this is reflected in many uh, jokes in the community. Uh, my favorite joke about indie game development is that uh, two people meet. One says, I've released my indie game. Oh, great. Made many sales? So he answers, not many really. Just sold my apartment and my car. Yeah, so the, this is the skepticism towards the, the success of independent uh, game development. But um, on the contrary, we managed to uh, gather uh, m much data. Uh, we interviewed many developers and uh, analyzed their stories. We have a community, FGL, uh, which uh, has 45,000 members. Community around Enhance, 3,000 developers. Also, I run the surveys in Facebook groups, in Russian-speaking game developers forums. And it appears that it's still possible for indies to get the game noticed and to get uh, 100,000 or millions of installs. And for me, I just made this picture spin like a sir because uh, uh, my, uh, I'm making my own indie games and in the total, uh, recently I've managed to cross one million of installs for three biggest titles. And so these are the num total number of Android installs, in which I didn't invest any money, just my time and my work with, uh, with community. So, what, uh, in, uh, what in the common can we find in the indie games, in the modern indie Android games, uh, which uh, uh, crossed uh, 100,000 installs or millions of installs? So first, uh, they start with very simple idea. They're not clones, but they... Uh, uh, they involve a very simple mechanics which was not yet uh, thought uh, before by other developers. Here are the samples of uh, games which I really like and uh, very notable games on Android. So the top left uh, game really made me jealous as a developer because every time I learn new programming language, I make a game which models gravity. But I just make, it, it, uh, make a game, make uh, it uh, as a tutorial, then leave it uh, and make something new. But uh, these developers of Orbit game, they completed uh, these mechanics when you have to launch uh, bodies er uh, er and let them orbit around the central gravity, ma uh, gravity mass. And they completed it, uh, released as a game. They got Google Play second place in the yearly contest, and they managed to reach uh, 10 million uh, of installs on Google Play. So the bottom game is a really fun game from Russian-speaking game developer um, whose nickname is Megabyte. And you see the, na the game is called uh, Handless Millionaire. Again, very simple idea. You have to uh, pick your hand through the guillotine and get the money before the guillotine crashes uh, and tears uh, the, head, uh, the hand apart. So this game has uh, three million of installs and growing. Again, very simple idea and uh, which uh, grabs uh, the player's attention and which was very easy to uh, make a first prototype. By the way, about uh, Handless Millionaire, this uh, game was inspired by a game jam, which uh, name was Greed, so the developer decided to make a game about greed. So the top game 
It's about uh, Maxwell Demon, a concept from physics when you uh, have these uh, particles and your task is to uh, put, move red particles to the red side and uh, blue particles to the, uh, to the blue side. And uh, I think you played this uh, uh, flipping knife game, yeah? Who plays? The bottom left picture. Okay, you have something very interesting ahead on your gaming experience. Because this is a game, Flipping Knife, by Czech Studio, which uh, was selected as top games on Android and I on iOS as well. And the mechanics, uh, as it starts, is also really simple. You have just uh, swiped to throw the knives, uh, the, uh, the blades, uh, the swords, and let them hit the target. And so many, uh, so this uh, very common feature in the successful indie games which were released by indie teams is that they grab the player's attention instantly and they are built around a very simple idea, simple but attractive idea, that we can say. So let's move further. So uh, Android is a most friendly, uh, friendly ecosystem for better testing. And uh, this is what uh, Android developers must fully use is uh, the beta testing feature. So recently, like one year ago or so, uh, even more now, Google uh, open, uh, let us create an open beta. And those developers who submitted their games to the early access in Google Play in open beta, they noticed uh, that as soon as the game gets to this category, it gives a good burst of installs. You get uh, first we get 1,000 to install, then you can uh, cross 10,000 or even 100,000 only from the early access on Google Play. So, and this is the feature which uh, every indie who wants to succeed, so to, who wants to grow the initial player mass, uh, should uh, should use. So, submitting the game on Android to uh, to open beta is uh, is a need to uh, to succeed further. Then, as we uh, submitted the game to open beta, uh, it is, it's made with two steps. First, you uh, upload the game and like open, uh, launch open beta, let everyone download the game, but it will have beta uh, marker in the play, uh, store description. And then you can submit a form to Google Play to let them uh, put your game into uh, the early access section of this market. Then you will receive the, uh, uh, the player's commands, the suggestions. Uh, what's important, these commands are not visible to other players. So that's the difference between beta and uh, regular release. You won't receive ratings. Uh, by the way, many players just write their ratings in, in plain text. Uh, but what's more important, you can answer the ratings, like in the usual uh, play market, and uh, all the successful developers who share their stories, they always answer the players' suggestions. Both good and bad, uh, b uh, both good and bad reviews should be answered. Uh, it's m even more important to answer bad reviews uh, because the player cared enough of your game, so they, uh, he, he th thought, uh, she thought that the game is bad, but they also spent some time to write the review. It's essential to answer and to tell the player that, okay, you care of their opinion and you will work uh, further. Uh, sometimes I find it useful to use such a technique when you, you, you of course, re receive the reviews translated in your uh, native language, and uh, if you receive, if the uh, original language of the review is Spanish, you can start with at least how uh, thank you sounds in Spanish like uh, Gracia, uh, in, in German, Danke, in Russian, Spasiba. So at least write a uh, uh, thank you word in the native language of the commenter, of the player, and then you can write in English uh, all, the, all your review. Then what uh, open beta, why open beta is important? Because it lets you gather statistics. So the most important parameter for, uh, for games, for mobile games now is the retention. So Obviously, uh, you, you, sh we, you should measure the retention rate of the game. It means uh, if like 100 players downloaded this, if uh, 40 players keep playing on the next day, 
And if 20 players keep playing on the seventh day, this is excellent. And this is uh, to which, uh, uh, what is your aim in improving your game. Uh, but also, you should track other statistics. For example, here is the example of uh, how I analyzed the player's growth uh, in my idle game, so how, uh, they, how quickly they progress. So I noticed that some players progress very rapidly, others uh, tend to progress very slowly. So now, uh, then I have to think, what is the uh, re reason for that? Perhaps it's bad tutorial, perhaps it's some hidden mechanics which some players uncovered and others are not, did not. Uh, perhaps it's uh, bad game balance. So if you have a chance to track the player's progression, you should fully use this and track them and analyze. So then, you have initial player base. They should be organized in the community. Uh, from, from my experience, I managed to, grow, to get 7,000 players in my Facebook group just by adding a button or inter, rather interactive element, join our Facebook group, and as uh, the player clicks this button, tap this button on the phone, the player is moved to the, uh, directed to the Facebook group and also receives in-game reward. So for me, a Facebook group creation uh, was useful, and um, all the developers who use the same technique, uh, from my advice independently, they also reported a good uh, result. So uh, if, you ha if the player is playing your game, uh, do your best to stay connected with the players as, as long as possible. Uh, why it's important to make a group, not a page? Uh, because in the group, if the player posts something, their post will, will look equal to your post. So they will feel that they are the equal members of the group. If, they, if it's a page, they can only like a page or comment, which is somewhere deeply hidden on the page interface. So uh, making a Facebook group is also uh, in the to-do list of indies and especially mobile indies. Uh, what we can do in the groups? We can run a polls, what features to, in, uh, to add into the game. We can get the bug reports, and it's a very useful tool to get the bug reports. Uh, many players uh, suggest their help in translation, and it's uh, really uh, 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 very, uh, very essential for the indies whose uh, time is limited to get uh, this type of help for, from the players. For me, I managed to, get, to find the translators uh, to seven languages from my Facebook group, and I'm very thankful for them. Other developers report the same, too. So what else we can do to get players uh, involved in the game beside the game? We can create a wiki page, especially uh, it refers to the games with many upgrades, with some uh, mechanics, uh, with some parameters which can be listed in the tables. And uh, it is very delightful to see when the players start filling the data in the wiki, not we developers, but the players, so they care enough to uh, spend some time uh, making our wiki page better. Other developers report Discord communities work well for them. And uh, for quite a number of them, Discord really does work, uh, does work well. For me, uh, more players, uh, man uh, I managed to get to Facebook than uh, Discord. So, but we should use all the opportunities. So, of course, uh, success means also financial success. And uh, for monetization, for mobile monetization, ban banners are the past, and uh, full uh, screen ads are also uh, the past, and also they're uh, very irritating to the players. Uh, what, uh, what is now widely used and widely successfully used are rewarded video ads, which are uh, smoothly integrated into the gameplay process. Uh, the typical way looks like this. The player receives suggestions uh, to give a reward, and uh, if uh, the player agrees to watch a video, then the reward can be doubled, or something like this. For example, from this is from my game, this is from a uh, Zombidal game, this is Adventure Capitalist, uh, which is uh, one of the top titles on mobile. And uh, a fun story that s sometimes the players started complaining that they can't view ads. 
Have you mentioned this like five years ago that <laughs> banner is not showing? I don't like <laughs> this situation. But right now, um, when uh, the ad is not shown in the game, the players complain. So, um, looks like the developers managed to find the balance between monetization and player's experience. So, the players select, okay, I want to spend 30 minutes of my time to get a bigger reward in the game. And we, as the developers, we should use this and uh, earn money because uh, we are uh, living, uh, we need money for living. And um, so uh, it's very important to find uh, the, proper, uh, as, uh, the proper ad provider. So there are multiple of ad providers like uh, Unity ads, AdMob, uh, Applovin, uh, Amazon ads, uh, m uh, many of them. And we should uh, constantly experiment or which uh, ad provider works better in, for your audience. Uh, so uh, then sometimes there are situations when ads are not available, and we should also use the situation for our own good. Like in my game, I managed to, uh, if the advertisement video ads are not available, instead of watching the ads for a reward, I suggest the player to tweet about the game for, and to get a reward. And every day I check my Twitter feed and find mentions about I'm playing Steampunk Idle Spinner, and uh, this, uh, this way I get uh, se um, several hundreds of free promoters of my game. So uh, then, let's... Um, various channels can be used to uh, let the players know about your game. We shouldn't think that it's enough to upload it to Google Play or whatever other... Uh, uh, to, uh, to Amazon, to uh, Sli uh, SlideMe, or to other uh, mobile stores, and get the player know it. We should work for this. And uh, from the experience of the players, there are uh, such useful channels, for example, Reddit. Uh, the, uh, so Reddit, it's uh, very uh, uh, difficult sometimes to get uh, your post not, uh, not banned for spamming. But if you uh, post about your game carefully, you can get a great boost of players' attention. So, uh, for example, this is the game by Mana Potion Studios about uh, the vans uh, in the uh, traveling by vans in the zombie apocalypse. So he posted about this, his game in the vans subreddit. Subreddit about vans. So would you like to play about this? So the game uh, Flipping Knife. They asked uh, uh, the YouTube channels who review real-world weapon to review their uh, game. Uh, for me, I'm, uh, I managed to get the player's attention for my strategy game by posting about it in the strategy games, uh, not, not strategy games forum, but historical forums. So there are, and uh, also very useful is XDA developers forum. So uh, we should uh, spread the word uh, about our game e uh, and to get uh, the, uh, the mass of our players' community. So as we are developers, we are indies, uh, no one is telling us what to do, but we should uh, ourselves organize our development process. So what can we do to keep organized? So first, uh, I find very useful a Screenshot Saturday movement. Has anyone participated in Screenshot Saturdays? All right, all right, yeah. So I will tell you, uh, every Saturday, it's like game developers tradition. Every Saturday, the developers show the screen, screen, screenshots or animated GIFs of their work in progress. And uh, we hashtag it Screenshot Saturday. We post it in Twitter, on Reddit, in Imgur, uh, in other game developer communities. And uh, this participation in Screenshot Saturdays uh, helps us get uh, motivated and uh, get uh, uh, to plan our work ahead. So I think, OK, by Saturday, I have to post some new screenshot. So perhaps on Friday, I have to pro uh, code uh, the working of some new in-game entity. Uh, participation in game jams like Ludum Dare. Who has participated in game jams? All right, great. So I'm happy to see this, because I'm also a, a regional coordinator of Global Game Jam in Eastern Europe, and also participated in Ludum Dara and other jams. So uh, for me, participation in Game Jam, when you spend 48 hours uh, solely on making a game, 
is a very uh, great boost for productivity. Uh, so, if you, uh, but uh, usually game jams start from a theme, and you should follow this, uh, this theme and make a game. But why not to spend these 48 hours in a row, but to uh, break through some plateau in your game development? So you just uh, work in the mode of game jam, very intense work, but you add to your code. Another technique which helped me to get organized is to screencast a work and then uh, submit my screencasts uh, uh, as speed, as expedited 60 times to YouTube. And uh, this time I uh, reached two aims. I add some code to my game and I also add uh, uh, promo materials for my game. So uh, the developer of Zombidal uh, is uh, launch uh, the video on Twitch, and also we can use uh, contests. There are multiple game developer contests uh, which can be used as uh, milestones for our game development. For example, uh, soon there will be Big Indie Pitch in Vienna and uh, uh, Game Connection Europe contest deadline will be on the 6th. So, and um, obviously, as we are speaking about Android, Android is much wider than Google Play, so we should use all the opportunities of that our game is on Android to submit it to all the stores there are. So the, the biggest, besides Google Play, there is Amazon Apps. As many successful developers report, uh, submitted to Amazon managed to uh, help them increase their uh, income by 10%. And also there are GetJar, SlideMe, uh, former Opera store now there, Bimobi Mobile store, and many others. Uh, we should fully use the power of Android uh, in our development. So to summarize, we should uh, keep to the idea that time is money, as Ben Franklin said. And as we are indies, we don't have much money, but we have time, we should use this time wisely. So using, uh, uh, we should, reduce development time by using simple gameplay and using simple art style. Simple doesn't meet uh, very badly drawn, but simple uh, which should be uh, style consistent. So we should use any technologies which can, which can integrate uh, third-party services very easily. We should let the players spend their own time to promote our game. Like uh, we should use add share button, we should uh, think how to integrate user-generated content and uh, how the players can post in our social network groups. And we should use our time in a more efficient way. We should get the most of our conference attendance to get more context. We should use game contest as deadlines, submit a screencast, make, uh, and switch between various tasks in the development and get regular feedback from the players if we are doing it right. So we should avoid doing the same job twice, like we should uh, crowdsource analytics uh, in, uh, and use the, experience, like use the experience of other players or other developers on what, uh, uh, what steps did well, what didn't do well for them to avoid double work. And uh, we should let our time pay back by integrating unobtrusive video ads. So, also, as we are indies and we have a successful indie title, which proves uh, to get uh, gain players' attention, this will help us get uh, more profitable deals with the publisher if we decide to go this way. And also, right now, many publishers uh, require indies to show the results of their soft launch before signing the contract. And, uh, but going with the publisher, we can get their support in uh, user acquisition, we can get uh, additional artists to our team and to help them promote our game. So, thank you, I wish you good luck and I will be ready to answer your questions and if you'd like to, I can review your game, make a video, uh, video review of me playing your game and giving suggestions. So, thank you. <laughs>